What's going on guys? Today we are starting a new segment I'm calling Severin 7's Top 7, where I'll go over my top 7 cards from a new set, top 7 decks that I might think are interesting at the moment, or whatever other top 7 I feel might be fun to go over at the time. Today we're going over my top 7 cards from Murders at Karlov Manor that I think are going to be fun to brew around. I know there's a lot of videos going around talking about all the new cards and going over spoilers and whatnot, but I would like to actually take a look at some of the more fun cards, uh, cards that m maybe not as many people are thinking about for competitive decks, but I want to find a way to brew around and make fun competitive decks around and break certain interactions with cards, things like that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the list. So starting off at number one on my list, we have Relive the Past. Five, a green and a white sorcery at rare. Return up to one target artifact card, up to one target land card, and up to one target non-aura enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. There are five, five elemental and elemental creatures in addition to their other types. This has got to be one of the more interesting reanimation spells I've seen in a while. I think it's kind of interesting that, uh, especially with all the man lands in the format, that we can kind of turn them into five, five elementals, uh, as well as artifacts and auras. There are a ton of great targets. The first three that pop to mind are, you know, one of the man lands is a land to, to reanimate. Portal to Phyrexia as the artifact and then something like Nahiri's Resolve even uh, because Nahiri's Resolve gives creatures you control plus one plus oh in haste so everything comes in with haste everything gets plus one plus oh so that's 18 damage right there uh, and then on top of that when the portal enters the battlefield they have to sacrifice three creatures so they're less likely to have creatures on the battlefield and then if you're playing a way to pump your team like the green white llama land that gives your creatures plus one plus one uh, that's 20 damage, so that's a pretty sweet combination. There's also just a ton of other fun ways that you can abuse this, but it's definitely a card that I am really, really looking forward to brewing around. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas that you would be excited to brew around with this, but it's definitely one of the more interesting cards in the set, and I'm very excited to find a way to break this card. Up next, we have Outrageous Robbery. X black black instant at rare target opponent exiles the top X cards of their library face down. You may look at and play those cards for as long as they remain exiled. If you cast a spell this way, you may spend mana as though it were a man of any color or any type to cast it. Boy, is this card a lot of fun. It is already just a fantastic thing that you can add right into Esper control as maybe like a two of, uh, is another way to help it. It, it counts as milling kind of uh, if you think about it that way because you're taking away cards from their library so it goes right along with your breach the multiverses and your jaces it's another way to attack their library but you get to cast the stuff that they get so um it's just a very interesting cool versatile finisher type card the fact that it's instant means that we can leave up removal counter spells flash threats, things like that. And then if they don't do something that we need to respond to, we can just, boom, pay a bunch of mana into this, steal a bunch of cards. And it's not like it's a creature or an enchantment that's letting us cast the things. And if we lose the creature or enchantment, we can't cast the cards anymore. We get those cards permanently and we can cast them whenever we want. So it's just a fantastic card. Uh, I'm really looking forward to trying to build around this as well. Uh, I think it's great in control, but I think it could even be really good in some mid-range decks as a top-end way to just outvalue other decks. Let me know what you think about it. All right, number three, we have Lost in the Maze. X blue blue enchantment at rare with flash. When Lost in the Maze enters the battlefield, tap X target creatures. Put a stun counter on each of those creatures you don't control. Tapped creatures you control have hexproof. This card plays two roles. Uh, it is very reminiscent of March, uh, Mar March of Swirling Mist, and the fact that you can either remove creatures out of the way for yourself to get through, or you can protect creatures of your own from removal with it. The interesting part is that it puts a stun counter on the creatures your opponents control, so it actually takes them out of the equation for a little longer than March of Swirling Mist. Now this does cost one extra mana than March of Swirling Mist, so that does matter. But I think it's a really interesting card. I think being able, having the versatility of being able to remove creatures from the opponent's side of the battlefield and protect our own has a lot of interesting connotations and I think that this card will definitely see play. I think that there are some interesting interactions with this card with things like Sereth of the Viper's Fang. Sereth of the Viper's Fang 
says that other tapped creatures you control have death touch and other untapped creatures you control have hexproof. So with this on the battlefield and Sarath on the battlefield, uh, basically your creatures always have hexproof. So in standard, there's not really a way to do that. And that's pretty cool. And if you can find a way to protect Sarath, you can basically just protect everything on your board. So that's just an interesting and fun interaction. I'm going to look at, look forward to trying to find a way to abuse, but I'm really excited about this card and, uh, just really, really interesting abilities in this set. There's just some very different style cards in this set and i really like that about it definitely i feel like this set's really going to shake standard up in a good way you know obviously you're still going to have your mono red aggro you're still going to have you know domains definitely not going anywhere but i feel like the the pool of decks and the versatility of the decks is going to get a lot more interesting on to number four we have aurelia the law above three red white legendary angel that rare flying vigilance haste whenever a player attacks with three or more creatures you draw a card whenever a player attacks with five or more creatures aurelia the law above deals three damage to each of your opponents and you gain three life boy is this one of the better aurelias that we've seen since the first one uh obviously uh, the original aurelia is just busted but we've seen a couple of Aurelias since then, and they just have not been on the same level. This one is amazing. Angels lost a lot last rotation with losing Righteous Valkyrie and some of the better, uh, you know, I forget the name of it, but the, the two mana angel that grows every time you play another angel. Um, so it lost a lot of good stuff. But there are a couple of really good angels in this set. There's a mythic in the set uh, that is a 4 2 lifelink, uh, vigilant lifelink with Ward 2 that's really good. Um, but that's one of those cards that's just obviously good. So, you know, we're not talking about that. I feel like this card might not see quite as much play, but boy, do I think in an angels deck, this card just goes way over the top. Uh, the fact that it has haste, fantastic. The fact that it has vigilance, awesome. You can't get wandering emperor with vigilance. And most of the time in an angel deck, you're going to have three creatures to attack with when this enters the battlefield. So you're going to probably draw a card too. Uh, so the card's just really, really strong. I think. It's been a while since we've had a good five mana flying haste creature in standard. You know, most of our, our really strong stuff is like Bone Horde Dracosaur right now, which is a very powerful card. But obviously, you know, you don't get that value right away. And if it dies, then you're just out five mana. This card gives you the potential to just get some value right away. It's very high chance that you're going to get to swing for four. Very high chance you're going to get to draw a card. And in some cases, you're going to get that three damage and three life. And it's also very good against other aggro decks because mono red is always attacking with tons and tons of creatures. If they want to attack with three creatures, guess what? You're drawing a card. If they want to attack you with a whole bunch of creatures. You're going to gain some life and that's going to make it harder for you to deal with. And angels is already really good at gaining life and making mono red cry. So I just think this is a fantastic card. I don't know if enough people are excited about this. And, it, you know, if you're sleeping on this card, I think you're going to regret it. Coming in at number five on the list, we've got Ezrim Agency Chief. One white, white, blue, blue, legendary creature, Archon Detective. So he's got that detective tag, which makes him useful. Uh, flying when Ezrim Ar Agency Chief enters the battlefield, investigate twice. Won't pay one, sacrifice an artifact. Ezrim gains your choice of Vigilance, Lifelink, or Hexproof until end of turn. This is a control finisher's dream. There are a ton of ways to get artifacts on the battlefield he makes to himself so i mean just the the fact that we can protect him at will the and and he gives us the potential to, to, to draw cards if we don't need to protect him at five mana he's a really really strong card i think I, I, he'll be good in more than just control i mean he'll be good in mid-range decks things like that as well but I really think that Azorius Control, if they're not going to play a mill strategy and they're looking for a solid, just beat down creature that's difficult to deal with, this card is fantastic. It provides card advantage potentially, and you know it provides potentially lifelink and hexproof vigilance. So it, it's just really solid. And there are tons of ways to make more than just the clue tokens that he produces, uh, obviously. If you want to play this in a more mid-range strategy, there are tons of removal spells right now that give us artifacts. You've got uh, Get Lost, which gives us two map tokens. Uh, you've got Fateful Absence that also gives us a clue token. Uh, so 
this card i think is going to be an absolute house i think this card is going to make a lot of people frustrated and i'm really excited to try to find either a control or mid-range shell that can just absolutely break this guy keep your eyes out for Ezra agency chief because i think eventually when people realize and find the right home for him he is going to be all over the ladder up next at number six we've got niv mizzet guild pack one of each color, so white, blue, black, red, green, legendary dragon avatar, a rare, flying, and hexproof from multicolored. When niv Mizzet Guild Pack deals combat damage to a player, it deals X damage to any target, target player draws X cards, and you gain X life, where X is the number of different color pairs among permanents you control that are exactly two colors. Hear me out. I know that this card is a big ask. You gotta have cards that have color pairs, so you gotta have guild-based cards. You have to have a decent amount of them on the board for it to be a lot of value. But I mean, he's a 6-6 six, six flying and he has Hexproof from Multicolored. So there's a handful of removal out there that he's going to dodge. Uh, but right now, a majority of the removal is monocolored. So I don't think that the Hexproof is going to be as useful as it could be. But there are a bunch of ways to take advantage of this. Like a Jota legendary list that's not based on humans and it's just based on legendary creatures is a fantastic way to try to build around this because you have things like Halana, Elena partners that can give this haste. Uh, you know, it's a perfect follow-up. You play Halana, Elena on turn four, you play this on turn five, it becomes an eight, eight, and it also gets haste. So it immediately can get some value. You've got uh, so many legendary creatures that are two colors. You've got Demic, you've got uh, Jarena, uh, you have, Glissa, Sunslayer, just a whole uh, Sloger, a whole bunch of different legendary creatures that happen to be two colors, guild colors, things like that. So I think that a deck playing this with some ways to give it haste potentially to make sure that you maybe can get that value right away. I feel like this card would slip right into a Jota deck. Jota, typically Jota is your top end in a Jota deck. Uh, Joe the Unifier is five colors, uh, and he's a 5-5, five, five, and he gives legendary creatures you control plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Uh, and then whenever you cast a legendary creature, exile cards from the top of your library until you find another one of lesser value and put it onto the battlefield. Uh, so usually the only five mana card you have in Joda is Joda. Uh, so having another five mana card that you can potentially play after you play Jota even uh, to spin into more stuff is also really cool. So I just think that this is a really fun card. I don't know if it's going to break the meta or be super competitive or anything like that. But this is the kind of card that gets me excited because all I can think of is how do I break it? How do I make it good? How do I make this card just frustrate somebody else and give me lots and lots of value because that's just the kind of player I am. And finally, at number seven, we have Voja, Jaws of the Conclave, two red, green, white, legendary creature, wolf at mythic, vigilance, trample, ward three. When Voja, Jaws of the Conclave attacks, put X plus one plus one counters on each creature you control where X is the number of elves you control and draw a card for each wolf you control. This is a really strong five drop. I mean, it's a five mana, five, five, Vigilant Trample Ward three. That would be, I don't know if it would be good enough to be competitive all by itself, but that would be a solid creature all by itself. The fact that when it attacks, you get to put plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control, including Voja, and he has Trample, equal to the number of elves you control. You're talking about, you know, all that we, we have so many mana ramping elves in the current standard right now. Play him, and then if it, he is Ward 3, so he's hard to remove. I mean, it's going to take your opponent's entire turn just to kill him. You know, five mana for a go for the throw. It doesn't feel very good. So he's really hard to remove, and he if he gets to attack, that is a lot of value. I mean, he even gets around Wandering Emperor. He's big enough to get around Channel Land removal. He's just... <laughs> this card is... This is probably the first card I'm going to try to break in the set, if I'm being honest. I, I say the best for last, in my opinion. Uh, he draws a card for himself when he attacks. Another, I, I've really been high on uh, Nahiri's Resolve lately and trying to find ways to break it in standard. And Nahiri's Resolve is another fantastic way to take advantage of this, uh, giving it haste and the fact that it has Vigilance trample the plus one plus zero oh from the nahiri's resolve makes them bigger and then so you immediately get to put a bunch of counters on stuff um or just any other way to give him haste you could even play this 
with Halana Elena, like I was saying with Niv Mizzet, Halana Elena is a fan, just a fantastic card. And any way to give some of these big haymakers haste is really good. There's also that new four mana four four that gives your other creatures haste. Uh, its other abilities don't really synergize super well with Boja Jaws of the Conclave uh, because it's a card built around abusing disguise. But it's still a four mana four four that gives everything haste. So that's pretty cool. And it's in the colors. So I think this card by itself, I think even if you don't build around it, I think is quite strong. And there are enough incidentally good elves in standard right now that you could very easily just have this guy pumping for two, three counters whenever he attacks. So with that, that is my list of the top seven cards I am excited to brew around with Murders at Karlov Manor. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, let me know if there's any cards you're really excited about. These are just my personal favorites. I'd love to hear what your favorites are. Nothing makes me happier than discussions about finding interesting ways to have fun. I think that Magic is supposed to be a game about fun. Obviously, being competitive is fantastic, and I always aim to be competitive while I'm having fun. You know, I don't play to purposely lose, but... I am a wholehearted believer in doing everything I can to try to play something that I am genuinely going to enjoy playing while I'm doing well. So if that's how you feel, then welcome home. If you enjoyed this, please remember to leave a like on the video and hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate all the support and it's been an absolute pleasure going over this with you and I hope you have a great day.